In this video, I'm going to start off a proof that a normal prior density is actually conjugate to a normal likelihood. And the example which we're going to be talking about here is the case where the variance of the likelihood, which I'm calling sigma squared x, is actually known. So starting off with Bayes' rule, we know that the posterior density, the probability of theta, given our sort of data x, is equal to the probability of x given theta, the likelihood, times the probability of theta, which is just our prior density, divided through by the probability of our data. And we said before that we can essentially sort of forget about the denominator here because there is no theta dependence here. Essentially the theta dependence has been integrated out of the denominator and so we can just regard the denominator as being fixed. And hence we have that the posterior density is proportional to the product of the likelihood, the probability of x given theta, times the prior, the probability of theta. Starting off with the likelihood, we know that in the case of where we have a normal likelihood, the probability of x given theta is equal to 1 over the square root of 2 pi sigma x squared times the exponent of minus xi minus theta, or squared, divided through by 2 sigma x squared. And in the case which, which we're talking about here, we're going to be talking about the case where we've got a sample of n observations. And we're going to assume that those observations are randomly sampled. In other words, sort of in Bayesian speak, they are exchangeable with one another. And we're going to then say that the overall likelihood is just given by taking the individual likelihoods and multiplying them together. Then what we're going to do is we're going to sort of take the fact that we've got a product of exponents and we're going to use the rule, which is the exponent of a times e to the power b is actually equal to e to the a plus b. And in this case where we've got sort of n things multiplied together, we can at least say we're going to sort of forget about this first bit here because it doesn't contain any theta dependence. And hence the likelihood in this example is proportional to the exponent of now we're going to have minus the sum from i equals 1 to n of now xi minus theta all squared divided by 2 sigma x squared. Similarly for the prior, we're going to forget about this whole first part of it because it doesn't contain any sort of theta dependence either. So that means that we have here for the posterior that the probability of theta given x, this is proportional to well, we're going to take the product of this sort of likelihood term here, which we've just derived, so that's exp minus the sum from i equals 1 to n of xi minus theta, or squared, divided through by 2 sigma x squared, times the exponent of, in this case, just going to be minus theta minus theta 0, so we're assuming that the prior density has a mean theta 0, is that all squared divided through by 2 sigma squared theta. So then finishing off that line, what we're now going to do is we are going to expand out each of these square brackets, so here and here. So if we do that, we get that this is equal to the exponent, and we're going to use the fact that essentially these are both e to the power something, so then when we multiply these things together, the powers actually add. So we then get the exponent of minus the sum from i equals 1 to n of xi squared, plus now we're going to have 2 theta times n x bar, and we've used the fact there that n times x bar is equivalent to the sum from i equals 1 to n of xi. To see that, you can just take the n over to the other side and it becomes 1 over n, and that obviously gives the sample mean. Then finally, for this sort of first part, we then have minus n theta squared, and this whole sort of expression here now on the bottom is divided through by 2 sigma x squared. Then for the next exponent, what we need to do is we're going to take away theta squared is going to be the sort of first term, minus 2 theta times theta 0 plus theta 0 squared, I've just expanded out this quadratic, divided through by 2 sigma theta squared. Then what we do is we actually note that some of these terms don't actually contain theta at all. So we can sort of forget about them because what we're interested in is the distribution in terms of theta. So then this sort of equals now becomes a sort of proportional to, and we can just get rid of those terms which don't actually explicitly contain theta. So we can get rid of this term. 
we can also get rid of this last term. So now we're just left with these sort of first two terms and these second two terms as well. And that's just going to make our life a little bit easier when we continue on in this derivation in the next video.